The Grand Canyon, a marvel of our planet, holds an air of captivating mystery. Its majestic cliffs and meandering currents create a landscape that is both awe-inspiring and perplexing. Despite our extensive knowledge of this renowned national park, countless enigmas lie veiled within its rocky walls. Recently, a startling revelation has shed new light on the canyon's enigmatic nature, leaving even the most experienced scientists astounded. What could have emerged from the canyon's depths to ignite such intrigue? Join us as we delve further into the depth, seeking to unravel the unfolding puzzle. Around 5 to 6 million years ago, the Colorado River initiated the formation of the Grand Canyon by carving through layers of rock. Since the end of the last ice age, humans have inhabited the canyon and its surroundings. In 1893, President Benjamin Harrison designated it as a forest reserve, and in 1919, it became an official United States National Park, located in the North Arizona. Specifically, northwest of Flagstaff, the Grand Canyon stretches approximately 270 miles in length up to 18 miles in width and delves one mile deep, making it one of the largest canyons globally. It showcases rocks that date back billions of years and are remarkably exposed. The canyon's towering walls, reaching a mile high, provide a glimpse into the Earth's crust spanning over 2 billion years, allowing geologists to study the evolution of our planet. And deep within the inner George lies the Vishnu Basement Rock, believed to be the oldest rocks in the canyon formed around 1.7 billion years ago. These rocks originated from the solidification of lava, joining a volcanic ocean chain to the North American continent. On the south rim of Grand Canyon National Park, visitors can explore the Trail of Time, an informative exhibit unraveling the canyon's geological past. Around 2 billion years ago, the stage was set as two tectonic plates collided, igniting the captivating saga of the Grand Canyon. Rows of volcanic islands converged, Fusing together as it drew near, intense heat and pressure transformed these rocks into the dark-hued basement rocks visible near the canyon's base. Among them are the Elves Child Genesis dating back 1.84 billion years, the canyon's oldest known rock. Following this period, a vast gap in the geological timeline emerges, spanning roughly 1.75 billion to 1.25 billion years ago, eroded away like missing chapters from a history book. The narrative resumes between 1.25 billion and 730 million years ago when fresh layers of rock known as the Grand Canyon Supergroup began to form intermittently. Here, the story takes an intriguing turn. The earliest signs of life within the canyon appeared in a 1.25 billion years old layer of limestone adorned with fossilized algae. These sediments settled at the bottom of prehistoric oceans, gradually solidifying into the stratified layers that shape the canyon today. Over 100 million years ago, the upper layer of rock began settling into the rightful positions, undergoing fragmentation and tiling and tilting due to geological pressures. Erosion further shaped them, eventually giving way to the formation of a new sea above. Recently, Carl Storm and his colleagues made a surprising discovery as they observed new sediment settling at the sea's bottom. To unravel this mystery, they turned their attention to the 60-mile formation, one of the rock layers which had never been accurately dated before. Previous estimates placed it at around 650 million years old, but a mineral analysis revealed its true age to be 508 million years, as reported in Nature Geoscience last year. This revelation unveils that the 60-mile formation does not belong to the older Grand Canyon supergroup. Rather, it is part of a younger rock group formed by rising sea levels and the ebb and flow of water across the ridge. Armed with these new dates, Carl Storm's team can now delve into understanding the speed at which the floods occurred and how quickly subsequent rock layers were deposited on top of the 60-mile formation. Over the following few hundred million years, the ocean continued depositing sediments, spanning from approximately 508 million to 270 million years ago. It was during this time that the upper two-thirds of the canyon walls witnessed the accumulation of various colorful rocks, including limestone, shales, and sandstone. When John Strong Newberry, the first geologist to explore the canyon in 1857, encountered these formations, he hailed them as the most magnificent display of layered rocks in the world. 
Adding the final touch is the cream-colored kebab limestone, which at 270 million years old crowns the canyon's rim. As time progressed, the plateau began to rise, and the river commands carving through it over a million years ago. At this point, the countless layers of rock that composed the canyon had already formed over countless ages. They merely awaited exposure. Simultaneously, around 70 million years ago, a collision between two Earth's crust plates initiated the uplifting of the Rocky Mountains, marking the beginning of this chapter in the saga. The land we now call the Four Corners region in the southwestern United States began to rise, ascending from near sea level to lofty heights. This breathtaking expanse is also known as the Colorado Plateau, a name that echoes its grandeur. In the depths of time, approximately 60 million years ago, torrents of water cascaded down from the mighty Rockies, birthing a force of nature that would leave an indelible mark on the landscape. It was here that the formidable Colorado River took its first breath. Fueled by the raw power of rushing water, as this river surged forth, its relentless current carved into the plateau, etching the beginnings of a spectacle we now river as the Grand Canyon. Over the eons, the river's ceaseless flow gradually eroded this plateau, crafting the magnificent canyon that captivates our sense today. And yet, this grand masterpiece was not solely the work of the Colorado River. Centuries ago, smaller rivers danced through the ancient terrain, sculpting side canyons, mesas, and buds, each bearing witness to the passage of time. But amidst the wonders and mysteries of the canyon's creation, there exists a divergence of opinions among geologists. Some proclaim that the canyon's genesis stretched back an astonishing 70 million years, citing the prolonged exposure of specific rock minerals on the canyon's surface as evidence. However, in Carlstrom's enlightened view, the true tale of the canyon unfolds more recently. He unravels a revelation that challenges the prevailing beliefs, asserting that the Colorado River system is a cohesive entity only interconnected and commenced its coursing journey around 6 million years ago. While certain parts of the canyon may harbor ancient secret, it is a juncture in the time that heralds the birth of the river's unified flow shaping the essence of the canyon we know today. Around 10,000 years ago, a remarkable chapter in human history unfolded as interpreted souls sought refuge and adventure in the breathtaking embrace of the canyon. In those ancient times, as the sun painted the sky with vibrant hues, brave hunters pursued the magnificent Shasta's plot, an awe-inspiring creature that now exists only in our memories. Fast forward to a more recent era, where the canyon's inhabitants unveil their creative powers. With nimble fingers and mouthless imagination, they fashion intricate animal figures from humble split twigs. These delicate artifacts, discovered and dated to approximately 4,000 years ago, serve as tangible links to the ingenuity and artistic expressions of our ancestors. But the story doesn't end here. A thousand years ago, the canyon evolved into a sanctuary of sustenance, its fertile lands were skillfully cultivated, and the bountiful crops swayed in harmony along its sacred floor. Resourceful communities utilized nature's own walls, hollowed caves nestled with the canyon walls to store their precious harvest, and astonishingly, some of these ancient caves remained untouched, whispering tales of resilience and prosperity from centuries past. Now let us turn our gaze to the present, where Grand Canyon National Park continues to captivate with its ever-unfolding wonders. Just days ago, the canyon unveiled its secret once again revealing the existence of two extraordinary life forms previously unknown to us. The remarkable duo of unidentified beings has been affectionately named pseudo-scorpions by their fascinated observers. It was between 2005 and 2007 when they were first stumbled upon. But sadly, their presence went largely unnoticed, barely capturing anyone's attention. However, a recent re-emergence has reignited the discussion surrounding the cave that once served as their dwelling, sparking a renewed curiosity among researchers. The striking resemblances shared by these enigmatic creatures hint at the existence of a remarkably intricate and expensive food chain within the confines of this minuscule cavern. The revolution challenges previous notions held by scientists, expanding our understanding of the possibilities that can thrive within such a confined space. 
their ability to coexist harmoniously and thrive has inspired a growing number of individuals to contemplate the environment and the delicate balance it encompasses. In comparison to their familiar scorpion counterparts, these newborn inhabitants exhibit notable distinctions. Most notably, they lack the elongated venomous tails commonly associated with true spiders. Instead, these pseudoscorpions rely on their deadly claw bobs to briefly immobilize their prey before indulging in their feast. Furthermore, their ancient lack of eyes may be an evolutionary consequence of their dimly lit habitat. These fascinating beings likely originated from desert-dwelling scorpions as their ancestors ventured underground in search of safety. These pseudoscorpions underwent adaptations to survive in a more inhospitable environment. Their main sustenance consists of minuscule insects and invertebrates that thrive on cricket excrement and the answering fungus. These resourceful pseudoscorpions hitch rides on larger creatures, forming symbiotic alliances that enable them to conquer and flourish in otherwise inaccessible habitats. In return, they provide pest control by preying on ticks, mites, fleas, and other parasites during their journey. Although the recently discovered cave is relatively compact, it harbors an astonishing array of creatures. It boasts the highest diversity of cave-adapted anthropods among all the caves in the Grand Canyon and hosts one of the northern Arizona's largest congregations of crickets. While these animals may appear indistinguishable to the untrained eye, a taxonomist closely examined their clothes and discerned unique characteristics. The experts scrutinized the newly found scorpion species, comparing them meticulously to their counterparts from different parts of the world. Now let's hear your thoughts about these discoveries in the comments below. If you liked our video, kindly subscribe our channel.